Hello my friends! So back in March I said that I would do a vlog video in Mendoza if the video in question got a thousand likes. Well, it's gotten a thousand likes. So yeah, here I am filming myself with my mask which I bought on a trip to Vietnam like five years ago and I now finally have a chance to use. So yeah, rather than doing like a vlog vlog, I'm gonna do a commentary over GoPro footage that I filmed of me taking a walk around town, having a good time. Yeah. Now you might be saying, hey wait, this is not what a vlog is, and you're correct. I'm not gonna film myself and talk to a camera in public, that would be probably the most embarrassing thing in the world. But most of the people who do that are very embarrassing, or, I don't know, they have, they have like no shame inhibitors in their brain, but I unfortunately do. So what I did instead was this, you know, film everything as I walk on my GoPro Hero 5 Black, which I bought secondhand for a hundred bucks way back in the day. God, this is like the second time I've ever used it. So yeah, it's a nice walk through Mendoza, having a good old time. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna commentate it. Here I go, you know, I'm walking. This is I'm this is in Gale Cruz, which is a um, a a neighborhood to the south of the Mendoza Central. But I mean, they're basically the same thing. There's not really any difference other than who the local government is. And this is like a, a bike path slash pedestrian path that goes right through everything. It's really good. It's really really long. I think it's like 10 kilometers, and I absolutely love it. Or at least, I think I would love it if I had a bike, but I don't. So, yeah, that's unfortunate, but hey. And as you'll notice, the sun was shining into my lens the entire time. So I'm sorry about that, but I mean, hey, you know, stuff happens. So, yeah, this is me doing a walk. This is some epic commentary, as you can hear. This is probably better without the commentary, isn't it? It's also extremely cold. When I filmed this, I think it was like 6 or 7 degrees Celsius, and the only way that it was bearable, even though I had like 5 layers of clothes on, was to be directly in the sun, which, luckily enough, this path put me in. Hell yeah! And I'm sure as you're noticing, the stabilization on this GoPro is not ideal, but I mean it's an older one, it's, this is just the best there is. You know, it's the best that I got. The alternative was to use my phone, which is even worse, so... I mean, I guess I could use like a real camera, but I'm not gonna walk around with a real camera in my hand for like 50 minutes. That's weird. But anyway, yeah, so you can see this path, it's, kind of, it's really nice, I mean... One of the, the best bike paths I've ever seen, at least, in terms of like practicality and length. Like, it takes you like right through the middle of everything. It's incredibly useful. It takes you straight to the city center. Um, and it's like um, adjacent with some of the, the main the main through fares, like um, Avenida San Martin, which is um, a little bit to the east of here. So yeah. That says, fuera fracking. Fuck off fracking, basically. You know, I'm, I'm guessing there was something in Mendoza to do with fracking, and so now there's graffiti against fracking. Because Mendoza is currently ruled by the right, and as we all know, the right are evil. So yeah. You see, you know, all types of people on these paths. You see runners, you see grannies coming home from shopping, you see mothers with prams, it's great. And so I'm looking here um, at this thing that I, I think I wanted to commentate over. It's like a... I don't know, it's weird, it's like a, a huge house behind a factory and it's just kind of interesting to me because I don't know how that came to be, it's kind of weird. I've never seen the people who live there, I've heard them, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's like a massive house behind a factory that looks a bit run down, but it's also massive, so it's like, hmm, I don't know. Maybe there's like employees who stay there or something? Seems a bit complete for that, who knows. So we're coming up to a road. Isn't that amazing? 
And I'm sorry about like the sound from the GoPro itself. I was just using the um, the natural like normal mic on the GoPro, which is absolutely awful, unusable. So I just turned it way down so that it's not too distracting. So that it hopefully provides some reasonably decent ambience. And you know, people here just cross the those tracks. Those are the um, like tram tracks. It's 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 like a tram, but it's a, it's not a tram. It's a tram that's not on the road. I don't know what you call those. Um, light rail, I think. But it's it's pretty it's a pretty impractical tram because it only goes like um, it's like a four or five kilometer line, and then it just gets replaced with a bus. So it's like, I mean, I prefer to walk. It's like a forty minute walk that I'm taking here. But I mean, you're gonna see everything. You're gonna see it. All of. Mendoza, you're gonna have a vision into another world, you know, Argentina, a country in South America that you probably think is really, really unbearably poor. And I mean, a lot of it is, but this part, not so much. It's pretty nice. In general, like, I think Godoy Cruz and Mendoza Central are some really, like, middle class areas, but there are jinx in that, like, a lot of the, um... Like, there's, there's a lot of really, really run-down houses that are probably, like, 80, 70, 80, 70 or 80 years old. And they seem a bit out of place, you know, like, right next to these, um, more modern, really, like, rich people houses that you can see around here every now and again. And more modern apartment developments and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's it's South America. There's There's inequality everywhere, of course. So yeah, something that you might notice just from looking at the buildings are, and then on the corner you can see that little corner store is really run down. If you're in like a, if you, if you're viewing in full screen, you'll be able to see it well. It's like really run down. It has like a tin roof, and it's right next to like some really nice new apartments and like houses in a similar style. You know, like something that. Another thing is um, this, this like the the style for like detached houses here, like individual houses. It's very square. It has a lot of they have a lot of sharp edges. I mean, that's not exactly the the best place to be showing you while I say that, but like, you'll see like just off to the side, everything is a square. And I'm not I don't know. And there's not really many yards. Like people's doors just go straight out onto the street, which is something that's, I don't know, it's a different style to what I'm used to from like Australia, other places that I've been to, like even Vietnam, the USA. And you'll see here the Simpsons graffiti. I'm not really sure why the Simpsons are such a huge deal in Argentina, but they are. Like the Simpsons are part of being Argentine. I don't know why, don't ask, but I mean, there's lots of really nice street art all around this path, which, you know, when there's really nice street art, generally it's a pretty gentrified area. So I'm assuming this is a gentrified area. Another thing is that, as I just showed that from that bright pink house in the corner, like, people just paint their houses here whatever the hell they want, and I love it. Like, there doesn't seem to be any sort of regulations on how things should look, which I'm pretty used to from the places that I've lived and that I've been to. And it's, so people can get really creative with um their like what they do to their houses, if they have the money. This is me again, hello. Don't I look like an absolute moron with like the extreme, like extremely overdone, like uh, uh, overstated mask that is supposed to be for doctors. Hey, I bought it in Vietnam in Hanoi like five, five years ago because I was dying from um, the pollution in the air there. Like. It's, the air there is so bad you can feel it when you breathe. So yeah, I think I have a decent enough excuse. But anyway. So this is me drinking water, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm drinking water now, that's, that's me. I'm not drinking water in the video, I'm drinking water as I narrate it. So yeah guys, nice leisurely walk in Mendoza on a crappy old GoPro, which I mean doesn't look that bad, it looks okay. I have it in linear mode so you can't really tell that it's a GoPro because um, it removes the fisheye effect. 
And I, maybe that makes this stability bad. Seems like it. I think I'm actually on the wrong side of the um, of the path. I'm on the uh, the bike side, and I think the other side is walking. I don't know. It changes. So like every time you cross the road, which side is which changes. So I don't really know. And to be honest, no one seems to care. So whatever. So there's you know you might notice the playgrounds are all like blocked off with tape. That's because you're not supposed to use them right now because of events that I can't mention. Oh, and this um this Dodge truck. I have to talk about this truck. It's awesome, isn't it? Like 1950s Dodge truck, and it's like actually in use. The guy does does um moves with it. Like he um what, what do you call them moves? I can't remember. Yeah, moves. Like you know house moves. And I see it around all the time. I don't know. It just it's I love the like orange matte paint. Everything about it is amazing, even though it's probably so old that it's falling apart, or at least doesn't have its original engine and stuff. And yeah, I don't know why... Oh yeah, there's like another corner store that's really run down that you can see, just as another example of how... You know, some of the buildings don't really fit in with the others. This is like a little, um... Fingermajigger with a statue that's completely and utterly covered in graffiti. Don't, I don't have any idea who he was, but um... I mean, he looks like a Roman bust, kind of, so I think... I'm sure that he deserves it because we need to destroy Western culture. And yeah, just regarding the restrictions in Mendoza right now, like, you can go out every two days depending on the final number of your ID. So, it's, it's as long as, you know, as long as your ID is allowed to go out, everything's pretty much unrestricted right now. And this is, most of Argentina is like this, only Buenos Aires is still on lockdown. Now we have Doggy. And to the left here, you can see some good examples of what I was talking about, of the extreme, extreme square houses. If anyone can explain why all the houses are like that in Argentina, not just in Mendoza, and all over Argentina, in Uruguay, I don't know, let me know. It's, it's interesting to me. It's like, you know, no one really cares about, about outside appearance, it's all about practicality, I can dig that. So, not much to say, you know, just doing a nice little walk. I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna fast forward or anything. This is gonna be the full raw walk. So if you wanna like see what happens later, just, just you know, fast forward yourself, check it out. You know, have a good time. Feel in the space. Okay, I love this, I love this, this bike path. And when I arrived here, I arrived in summer, and my plan was like to spend a month or two here. You know, use the, um, like the, uh, there's like a share bike program here run by the city. You know, you go and take a bike, put it back in, in like the station, stuff like that. Many cities have them. And I wanted to use that. But two problems. First is that the bikes from that are absolutely awful. I've used three of them, and all three of them didn't have working brakes. And the tires were like, one of them didn't even have a tube in the back tire, that was interesting. Um, second is that, when I arrived here, it was still amazing weather, like, oh, Mendoza, when it's hot, is great. And then, all of that amazing weather was wasted in lockdown. So now the weather is terrible and I have no bike. I don't even want to go outside anymore. I'm only going outside here because, like... You know, otherwise I'd feel like I was dying from being stuck inside all the time. So yeah. And hey, so this this house and this little beetle outside... Oh, I love it. I love the, like, just blue paint, blue on white. And the little blue beetle just parked outside all the time. Oh, it's so great. I have a photo of that on my Instagram too. And then right next to it, you know, you can see, like, see that, like, brick house right there? Red brick house with a, um corrugated iron roof and then right next to it you have these like 
fucking amazing apartments, like amazing rich people apartments. And they have like, you know, private security, gates, everything, you know, barbed wire on the fences. Right next door, literally right next door. I don't know, is this common elsewhere? In Australia, not so much. Maybe in the US it is, but... Vietnam, when I was there, didn't see it much either. I've been to a lot of countries. Peru, like, this sort of, you know, there's like rich... It's more like, in Peru, obviously there's inequality, but it's a lot more segregated. Here, I don't know, it's like... You have a house like that, that is completely like... You know, obviously not great. And then next door you have these people living in these amazing, incredible luxury apartments with private security 24-7. Literally, like, the wall of that apart- like, the wall of those apartment buildings are connected to that red brick house. So yeah, I mean this is an, a really amazingly beautiful area and I love it, but you see things like that. Well, I love it when it's not cold. It's so, it's so goddamn cold right now. I'm literally dying. I am not made for this sort of cold. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it snowed a few times when I was actually stuck inside because of quarantine. So yeah, there's another station. 25 de Mayo. What is that day? I don't remember. Something to do with independence? I don't even know Argentina's Independence Day, I think. Um, Nueva de Julio is 9th of, Ju of July is Argentina's Independence Day. So what's 25th of May? The Declaration of Independence, maybe? No, that would be what Independence Day is. What am I talking about? Eh, I don't know. I'll look it up right now and tell you. 25th May, Argentina. The May Revolution. It was the beginning of the May Revolution. Which I think eventually led to independence. Okay, there we go. I never said I know anything about 19th century history, okay? So yeah, on the left here you'll see a... Oh, when I show you you'll see there's like um, What do you call it? Uh, I don't even know what you call this. A place that sells plants, okay? A plant shop. A garden, a garden shop. One stop shop for all your garden needs. God, they should have me in their ads. So... What is my mission on this walk? Well, firstly is to film. Secondly, I was getting- I was going to get lunch because... Basically, the only- like, the only excuse that I have to go out right now because I don't have a bike I, I don't want to join a gym or anything because I, I don't plan to stay here for much longer. I want to leave as soon as possible. Um, like the only reason that I have is like to motivate myself to go out because I don't, also don't know anyone around here. I just I came here alone because I was planning to um, to leave and then quarantine happened. But so basically I, I walk to the city center from um, where, I, where I'm staying, which is like... I didn't show you the first like two or three kilometers of this walk. I only showed you once I got to the, the really nice black path. So... I walk like... Jeez, I walk like eight kilometers to the city center to go and eat some food, and then I walk back. I mean, it's okay. You live a little bit, get some exercise. Have a, a... A hipster coffee. There's lots of hipster coffee here, which is very good. This is an embar this is embarrassing because I was like, oh, I don't want to go down, I don't want to walk there, I want to be like a, a bouge and walk around, you know? I'm not stepping, I'm not stepping in the rocks. I'm way too good to step in the rocks. God. It's the work of a servant. And here you can see like the drain, which is um, um, kind of like a river drain, I, I don't know what, what you call that, but it's supposed to catch the rain and stuff like that, and it smells like shit all the time, so that's interesting. And yeah, so I crossed the road here, and this is the first time I ever see them doing this. Like how they water the um the turf here is with um <laughs> is with this this truck. And I'm like, is he gonna fucking spray me? Is he gonna, is he gonna stop? Or is he gonna spray me with his fucking water? And he stopped so I could get by. 
And then the entire path is wet, so yeah. Pretty interesting. And these guys here like sell fruit or something on the side of the road. You can also see here on the side of the on the side of the like between the footpath or the bike path and the road, there's like these these huge gutters. And this is something unique to Mendoza. I've never seen them anywhere else. I'm not sure what they're for. Someone told me once, but I forgot. I'm not sure what they're for. I said that wrong, so I repeated it. Like, so, I don't know. It doesn't rain here very often, but maybe when it does rain, they're necessary. I don't know. Something like that. But they, they make it like, so you have to either jump or only cross at certain points. And if you don't see them, well, you know, this wouldn't be a good city to be blind in, I don't think. So the first time I came here, so why did I, why did I even come to Mendoza? That's a, a little bit of a story, I guess. My my American friends came to visit me in way back, like October. Oh, wait, that's not way back. Like October last year. And we originally planned to go to Chile, but one of my friend's girlfriends was terrified of going to Chile because of the protests. I wanted to go anyway. I mean, the protests made me want to go there more. So, and then instead of so... Instead of going to Chile, they wanted to go somewhere where there's wine, and Mendoza is an extremely famous wine-growing region. It's like the wine-growing region of Argentina, nothing even comes close. Worldwide, I think it's also very popular. So we came to Mendoza, and it was, it was in October when it was perfect weather, really hot, fantastic. And I loved it. Oh, like, I just, I just love something about the city, like, it's like, um, it's like a really, Mendoza's really small. The entire province, I think, is 800,000 people, and the city has, like, 200, 300,000 only. There's another old car. You see really, you see a lot of really old cars in Argentina all the time. People are just, like, holding them together with tape because they can't afford to buy a new one. You know, it's probably been passed down from their grandpa, from their grandpa or something. So, um, as I was saying, yeah. So we came to Mendoza, my friend paid for everything for me because at the time I couldn't afford it. So he's, you know, I mean, redistribution of wealth. He's a rich American, it's just. So we came to Mendoza and he also paid for a bunch of wine tours for me, which were a bunch of like the most bougie crap I've ever seen in my life. Holy hell. And like everyone else there, like we were the only normal people there. Like, you know, my friends are, are Americans, but they're working class. They're not rich or anything. So, every, everyone else there was like the kind, like, the kind of like rich people who wear like pink, like pink Ralph Lauren polo shirts and like white, like kneeling shorts and like Panama hats. You know, just imagine that. So yeah, I was, I was, I was in like out of my element there, but I mean, it was ridiculous. The, the bougiest crap I've ever seen, but. Everyone should be able to have wine tours, you know, we're gonna redistribute wine tours to everyone. You know, I'm, I'm just, I should, I should probably talk about that graffiti, but it's nice, isn't it? This is, I didn't like this graffiti though, because it's a uh, Borges, who is a fascist. He's a bad guy. We hate you, Borges. But yeah. So, and while we were in Mendoza, um, we went to um, a restaurant in the city center, which, you know, my friends again paid for me because I was a bum. Still, I'm a bit of a bum, but not as much. And, um... It was called Josefina, and it's like... Ridiculous, incredible restaurant. Like, fine dining sort of thing, but not really. I guess fine dining is more like... You know... I mean, I don't know. You, you guys can tell me, because you're going to see it at the end. And... But it was like... Like... A fine dining sort of restaurant, but the prices are like... What the price that it costs you on average to go and, ha and have some a, f a burger and, f and fries in a bar in Buenos Aires. So I was blown away like wow I've literally in Australia I couldn't even afford to to like go to a restaurant ever in Buenos Aires you know if I go to a restaurant it's like to a, a cheap neighborhood cafe where I have like um, some media lunas which are like croissants and a coffee. So for for me to experience a restaurant like this was like, and for it to be so cheap, like, I was like, how the hell are they even in business, honestly? I mean, I guess Mendoza is probably um, not as rich of a province as, as Buenos Aires. I mean, it isn't. 
so that probably explains it, but this is my mission. I'm going there right now, and I'm going to eat there, and I'm going to show you what they give me. And the thing is, and also, okay, intermission from this story, this building here is, um, I think it's like the, the National Water Institute building, so apparently that, that's important. It's weird that they build it, they build the National Water Institute in a place where it never rains. That seems like an oversight. I'd like to see who, who, why they built it here. I don't know anything about what I'm talking about, by the way, obviously, so. So yeah, the, the restaurant that I'm going to, they have a lunch deal that's 500 pesos, 500 Argentine pesos, that's 7 US dollars. Or, um, by the unofficial rate, because that's the, the, the official government rate. By the unofficial rate, I think that's like 4 US dollars. So, 450 around there, so it's like, that guy almost killed me, but yeah. It's like, holy crap, I can, like, so you get like the, the plate of the day, uh, a coffee, and a huge glass of wine, of local wine, for 7 US dollars. So I've been going there like once or twice a week for the last couple of weeks, ever since we've been allowed to actually go outside. And it's like, dude, everyone should, everyone should, should experience the bougie of this. Everyone, we need to redistribute the restaurants, man. That's what I'm saying. Everyone should have bougie restaurants. Bourgeois for all. And here's one of the trams, but I'm not showing you it. Instead of showing you the tram, I'm showing you the, um, this university to the left. It's called the National Faculty or National Faculty of Mendoza or something. I don't, that, that doesn't tell me anything. Faculty of what? Faculty of what exactly? I have no clue. But yeah, it's a university and it's, it, it exists. And that's like a cafe in a gas station or something, I think? I don't know. Yeah, there it is. Faculty, regional faculty of Mendoza. What does that mean? Do they teach you to be regional there? I don't understand, but whatever. <laughs> I think may maybe faculty means like it's a teacher college. Because they do have lots of teacher colleges here in Argentina, like specifically for teaching. So we're approaching the city center here. And I'm still showing you the, um, the university. I don't know why. So yeah, this is basically the beginning of the city center of Mendoza. But I'm not actually gonna sh I mean, uh, yeah, at the end I'll show you the actual city center after, after lunch, which I ate like three days ago when I filmed this, so it's weird to say that. And the, the path, at least the pedestrian path ends here. The bike path continues on the side of the road, but I'm not a bike, so. I mean, overall, it's a, it's a really nice area. It's pretty, pretty solid, thick, solid, tight. I want to see how thick, solid and tight you can get Mendoza. Sis, what, what, what is the noise that I just made? I'm not going to edit that out, even though it's embarrassing. Sis, sis, I have no clue. So anyway, this is me crossing the road here, you know, giving you a look around. Nice blue sky. Goddamn cops, hate him. As a fella, he's going first, he beat me, he's, he's winning the race, I can't let that happen. That guy almost killed me. So you can see on the side of the road there, there's more of those gutters. No clue why they're so deep. You can also hear that I have the sniffles. I always get them in the cold. It makes it really hard for me to make videos when it's cold because like 
My nose is congested the entire time and my voice sounds even worse than normal. So the street that I'm approaching here is, um, I don't, it's called Vicia Nueva, I think. Aristeles Vicia Nueva is the name of the street. It's like the main, like, tourist street for gringos like me. It's like a parking guy. I think you have to, like, here the, the, um, the, um, the municipality pays people to, to be, like, to charge people for parking or something? I don't know. And it's weird because you have to, they're everywhere. So I don't know what they're actually for, but they're definitely like official municipality workers. I think you have to pay to park literally everywhere, on, even on the side of the road here, which is weird. If, if anyone knows what they're for, just leave a comment, tell us, inform us. Don't let my speculation get the better of us. So yeah, the street that I'm going to is the most boo street in Mendoza. It has a bunch of bars, it's like cobblestone, and it also has the restaurant that I'm going to. So here we have um, holes in the ground that seem very dangerous. <laughs> so yeah, it's, they've been like that the entire time that I've been here. I think they should probably be fixed, but whatever. As I said, not a great city to be blind in. So here, there we have like an ad for a, there's more holes in the ground with trees. The ad that I passed was like an ad for a a, a um, provincial government app to like report crime. I'm not a snitch, so I'm not going to do that. Any crime is fine by me. And here we have the share bikes, the terrible share bikes that no one should ever use because they're so incredibly dangerous. That's what, that, that first one actually looks quite nice, like it has a fresh coat of paint. And, you know, they have, like, these automatic, um, dispensary locations. Uh, if you're from mo a lot of cities, you've probably seen this before. The bikes themselves are just awful, though. Practically unusable, like, worse than walking when you're going uphill. Significantly worse. Even just a slight incline. Here we, um... I don't know what that is, it's Iskrevania, I don't know what the Iskrivania, something to do with writing. Maybe it's like a notary public or something, I don't know. But anyway, so this is the left turn onto Vicha Nueva. Avenida Vicha Nueva. Everything here is painted, that's how you know that it's gentrified because they, they do they get legal street artists to come and paint everything legally. You know, same thing in any hipster district anywhere in the world. Oh, I was calling it bougie. No, this, you know, this is the hipster area. This is where the hipsters go. This is where you go if you have like a carefully sculpted beard, not like my beard, which is like you know a caveman beard. A carefully sculpted beard and like a nerd mustache, and you wear frameless glasses. This is where you go in Mendoza, and I'm here. So what does it say about me? I, this was I got here about like. 11.59, so everything is just opening because it's 12. So yeah, there's a bunch of bars to the right and there's bars to the left. It's just like Bar Street. When I first came here with my friends, like when I came here, I was, I was shocked because there was like not a single place to even stand on this street. There were so many people and it's like, isn't this supposed to be... A city of like 200,000 people? Is half, are half of them here? What the hell is going on? There was also like a, a bus, like a party bus that just drives in circles and people have a party on it? God. You know, this is, this, as I said, hipster tourist area. It's just one street though, the rest of Mendoza is fine. And this is the restaurant. It's called Josefina. And when I got there, I was the first one there all day and the door wasn't open yet. So I tried to open it and then some guy ran up and opened it. And yeah. Hola. 
Now I'm not going to literally show you me eating the food, though I will show you a picture. But here's just like, you know, a panorama of the, the restaurant that I have no place being in because this is for rich people who disgust me. So here was the lunch deal of the day. It's a dish called Lomo Saltado. It's Peruvian. It's pretty much just a stir fry with beef, um, tomato, and onion, and for some reason french fries. It's Peru. They put french fries in everything. So Peruvian cuisine, if you don't know, is basically just Chinese cuisine with french fries in it. But anyway, yeah, it was it was good, but usually you would expect that dish to have a side of rice. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit, it's, it's, it was good. It wasn't bad. It was fine. Now, this is a dish that I had from there another time that I went when I was lucky enough that this was the lunch deal so that a pleb like me could afford it. And holy crap, this thing was amazing. It's like a chicken kiev, but they didn't call it that, with um, steamed broccoli that is literally perfect. Like, my steamed broccoli is disgusting. This steamed broccoli, oh. And with like um, a paste of, I think it was pumpkin or, or carrot, but whatever it was, it was incredible. So yeah, they can do a lot better than that Lomo Soldado. Now after lunch, I thought I would just go home, but then I said, no, my viewers want to see Mendoza. They want to see more of it, you know. I can't just leave you guys hanging without showing you the city center, right? So now I'm walking to the city center and I'm going to show you it. Why am I showing you like a gutter? I'm a terrible cameraman. But anyway, yeah, so we're going to go to the city center of Mendoza now and um, you're going to see like the, I guess the main part of the city. The main part of the city within the province which is named for the city. Or is it the other way around? I have no idea. Anyway, look at this nice, is this a gazebo? Is this what a gazebo is? I think so, this is a gazebo. It's nice and cool. You can tell that rich people live around here because they have things like this. And once again, the sun is completely ruining my my camera's life. Sorry, folks. So yeah, not really much interesting going on, in this, is there? Got to find someone to talk about. Hey guys, how about the weather? Isn't it cold? Man, I sure hate Mendoza. It sure is cold all the time. I sure want to leave. Please, Alberto, let me leave. End the quarantine. Please. I mean, I love the quarantine for how mad it makes right-wingers, but I also hate it because I can't leave and go to somewhere warmer. It's, it's the worst. So yeah, this is me, you know, crossing the road, you know, as you do. There's a nice bright red tram. That is an extremely red tram. Is it a tram when it's not like in the middle of the road or is it something else? Is it light rail? What's the difference? Let me know in the comments. I won't read them and I don't really care honestly, but let me know anyway. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going on a walk. This is one of the main streets to the left and right here, but I'm not going to go down it because I, I, for some reason I decided to just go down this, this like, you know, not so important street instead of showing you the main street. So yeah, that was a mistake. But anyway, so now I'm heading to two of the main plazas in the center of Mendoza. Um, the Plaza Independencia and Plaza España. For some reason, or is it Plaza Italia? One of those two. For some reason, you know, everyone in Argentina has a colonized brain, so there's like 15 different Plaza Españas and Plaza Italias in every single city. We want to be European so bad. <laughs> I'm really not good at holding my camera still. I mean, I blame the stabilization. It's not my fault. If it's not obvious, there is a mask. Well, everyone has to wear a mask. It's been like that for like oof, two months or more now. Everyone has to wear a mask in Mendoza and in most of the country at this point, I believe, as well. And that is uh, Plaza Italia, across the road. I'll get there in an hour or so, don't worry.
Just gotta cross these roads. And then of course, as soon as I, I get across here, the light turns green this on this side, so I can't cross. So yeah, welcome to the park. There's trees, there's grass, there's there's chair, there's statue. All the you know the best kind of statue, you know, the statue of the um the the white marble man with small penis. Actually no, I don't think there's any of those. I couldn't really figure out what this park was for when I was there and I haven't looked it up still, but I think it's this is um a park that was built like in association with the government of Italy to remember World War One or World War Two. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Oh, I just noticed there was a thing on my lens and I took it off. But apparently it didn't affect the image. And then I wiped my lens, you, you know, I wiped your face. You're, you're a baby or something. You got some snot all over your face. Yeah, I think this is like a monument to Argentine Italians who fought in World War One and Two or something. I hope it's not in World War Two, unless they were the partisans, something like that. To be honest, I, I didn't really figure it out before I left the park, but whatever. And then I go to this other this other monument, which is like Romulus with the two kids or whatever. I don't know which one is. It. Are the kids Romulus or is is the wolf Romulus? Whatever. Because you know we're so, we're so colonized here in Argentina that we celebrate the founding of the Roman Empire and we dedicate an entire park to it. Yeah, there it is. There it is, the Romulus, and apparently it needs a gate around it because people have been doing bad things to it, I don't know. Something like that. It needs extra security. <clears throat> yeah, you get to listen to me drink water, isn't that disgusting? That's what happens when I just make a video where I commentate over some footage that I filmed rather than actually editing it. God, could you imagine like actually editing a 52 minute commentary video of a walk to be to be like good without any of that sort of stuff in it? No, impossible. You guys are going to deal with everything. All of my mistakes, all of my disgusting mouth noises that I make, all of my coughs like this. <clears throat> You're not supposed to do that, it destroys your voice, but I do it anyway. And here it seems like I decide to talk to the camera for like the first time. Amazing words there from a, a true genius. One of the greatest, one of the greatest contributors to Western civilization there has ever been. Actually, no, one of the greatest destroyers of Western civilization. Sorry, got that the wrong way around. So yeah, that's one plaza, and the next one is like five times the size of that. And it's the main one. And there's, there's not really that much going on in the city. I mean, there's lots of cars, but there's not really many people. I think there's two reasons for that. One, the quarantine means that half of the people can't go outside. And two, it's it's so cold. I mean, you can see this it looks sunny, like it looks great, doesn't it? It looks like a really nice day. No, it's awful. It's unbearable. I hate it. I despise it. Uh, I need to go live somewhere where it's never ever cold. It also makes it hard for me to, to record videos because I have to turn my heater and stuff off because they make noise. It's, oh, it's obnoxious. I hate the cold. I, I plan to leave this place before it got cold. My hubris got the better of me. I didn't predict the global pandemic. So to the right here, there's like a museum and they're playing rock music and I don't know why, but yeah, there you go. Rock, rock music museum.
This is the go bar. That's where you go when you, when you want a bar, obviously. There's another one of the parking guys in the high vis to the right. Don't know why they exist, but they do. Isn't this very interesting? Yep, in Argentina we have cars and roads. Could you believe it? I bet a lot of you thought that is, you know, this was like a desert or something, and everyone lived in huts. It's a police. I hate them. More gutter. Very beautiful gutter right there. Good at holding rain, I'm sure. And there's like this really nice sort of weirdly designed sheer brick apartment building that I thought was cool. I like the windows in the um the what do you call those? The the sticks, okay? I'm gonna call them the sticks. The windows in the sticks. There. You know, I was walking past this barbershop and I saw like the the tired old stock images and I was thinking not barbershop but hairdresser and I was thinking like all the best barbers have like the exact same like ridiculous stock images all over the place so maybe that goes for women's hairdressers as well I don't know I only go to barbers and I, I tell them can you just please cut shave off my entire beard and cut my hair short and then whatever they give me that's what I get I don't give a crap um, I live on life on the wild side, you know, having having a, a huge beard and a huge hair all the time until it gets annoying and then I get a cut. So now we are approaching the main plaza. Independencia. And I'm gonna spend like 10 seconds just standing in front of this sign showing you it because I thought it was funny how they don't translate um like they don't translate the word independence <laughs> like it's it half the sign is in English it says Plaza Independencia Independencia Square what guys independence is a word in English too and you can see the graffiti there que sea ley that means um oh, wait I'm talking no I was just looking at myself Am I talking? Oh, whatever I say here, it's not important. So, que sea ley is about the abortion law, like green. It's like, you know, make it law. I agree, make it law. Get rid of the conservatives. I'm like humming to myself here, but whatever I'm saying, it's not important. What I'm saying in the voiceover is much more important. Ignore my past self and listen to me now. There's an anarchy over there. Anarchy, hell yeah. Fight the power. There's not really much to see, unfortunately, because the main part of the square is closed off. As my past self just said, there's not much to see here because the main part of the square is closed off right now. Don't know why, it might be because of, you know, the event. Which I can't mention because it gets this video auto auto demonetized. Eh, it's a nice park. It's a cool park. It's a fun park. You have a good time here with your friends, you know, bring your dog. Just make sure to pick up its poop, please. A lot of people here don't do that. Now there was something like what I what, the way that I describe Buenos Aires, in terms of like, at least in the center of Buenos Aires, like the city city of Buenos Aires. It's, it looks like Paris, but with more dog crap everywhere. That's it. Aborto legal. Legal abortion, I agree. Abortions are fun, everyone should be able to have one. That was a joke. You know, conservatives think that abortions are like really fun, so if they're legalized, oh, they're gonna go get abortion just, just you know, as, as a form of birth control to have fun. No one, no one wants to get an abortion. What the hell? 
in a second here these dogs are gonna go crazy you know they, they look cool and and fun right now but just watch you're gonna see Yeah, there you go. There's a battle between dogs. It's a it's a double team, two on one. Just shooing him away. That's what you get for trying to ambush that poor what is that, a Labrador or a Golden Retriever? One of those things. Anyone who has a Labrador or Golden Retriever is a bougie. There's no exceptions. So they deserve it to be honest. So now we're going to take a look at the fountain. The, the fountain is the centerpiece of the, of the plaza. It's the fountain of independence or something. I don't know, is it? I don't know, I made that up. Don't listen to me. Isn't that incredible? Wow, there's water and it flows out and then it go, I think it goes back and it flows out again. Hopefully, otherwise they're wasting lots of water. And now from here, what happens is I walk and, um, and like halfway through walking I realized, hey, there's like um, a pedestrian street in the city center here that I should show before I stop filming. And I go there. So yeah, that's where we're going to go now. Doesn't everything look so cold? No, it doesn't look cold at all. This looks like a nice warm day. Well, looks are deceiving, let me tell you. Did I mention that I hate the cold? Just watching this again, and there really is like a, a huge lack of pedestrians. So there's there's more car, like individual cars than pedestrians. It seems weird because this is an incredibly walkable city. I don't know. I guess it's because you know people who are going to work are more likely to be driving. And people who are going to work have an exception from the, you know, you can only go out once every few days thing. You know, they can go out whatever day. So they're more likely to be driving, I guess, than walking. You know, they don't, you know, you don't walk to work unless you live, like, right there. Across the road, yeah, I was surprised to see this place. It's like, it's like a, an, a fake Argentine McDonald's that I've never heard of before. Kingo, it's called. Kingo, Kingo. Whatever. However you want to pronounce it. Australian or Spanish. It, you do you. I do me. Kingo. That's my Australian pronunciation. You know, you can go here if you want to clog your arteries. Have a good time. That's what I like to say. Godzilla. <laughs> and here there are garages like on the side you know, just garages of apartment buildings and also just private garages. And they have that that thing there. It's like an, an alarm that goes off so you know when come, someone's going in or coming out. That's probably very common, again, but I've never seen it until here because I guess there's not, there's not as much private parking where I'm from. People just park on the side of the road, so... I don't know. What do you guys, if you've, if you've gotten to this point, I don't know, are you crazy? Why are you watching like an hour long video of some guy walking while he just rambles incoherently over it? What's wrong with you? But anyway, if you are like, I don't know, maybe you're watching, you've never seen a South American country before like this, you know, like just someone walking around. What's your impression? That would be interesting to read. I got my phone out here so that I could look up where exactly the um, pedestrian street is. 
to make sure that I'm not wasting my time. Oh, and there's like another old old truck. What is that? Is that like a 1930s or 40s truck? It looks like it to me. That's amazing. And a lot of them are actually, you know, they're in use. Like the one that I, the one that you saw earlier, it might have been actually been the same one. Like the gray truck that drove by, it looked, it was exactly the same. I'm pretty sure it's the same one. So yeah, lots of people using old ass cars here, practically every day. And look at that. That's, look at that sedan, that white one. That's another one. What is that like? A, a 60s, 70s model? Bolsa de Comercio de Mendoza. I don't know what is that. What is <laughs> the commercial bag of Mendoza? That doesn't tell me anything. And I don't care about business stuff, so I haven't looked it up. I just choose to like create my own reality. And here we are on the pedestrian street, which is again for tourists and rich people. In, in, in um, Buenos Aires, there's another street like this it's called Calle Florida, and it's just, uh, you know, you just sell, people just sell stuff. There was an Avenida or Calle, I don't know, one of those two. You know, it's just like a, a commercial hub. Here though, I don't know. It seems like this is something fairly recent because everything looks really new and they tried to like build it up into being a big thing I don't know if it worked but it's, it's okay it's just nothing's nothing incredible but I just wanted to show you it before I sign off after this long walk that something interesting does happen at the end right before my battery dies so you'll see that We've got these little gazebos again, we've got... Nah, just stuff, you know, stuff. You guys have eyes, you don't need me to tell you everything, do you? I mean, or maybe you don't, I'm sorry. That's very ableist of me. So I'll describe what I'm seeing here. There is a blue fountain. I don't know why it's blue, but the water is blue coming from this fountain. Interesting. Is it supposed to make it cooler? Like... I'm pretty sure this place would be exactly the same with or without that fountain. Fountains are just a complete waste of resources, no one should ever make them. There's a travel agent on the side there that is clearly not seeing its best of days. <coughs> Sorry, I need to clear my throat. And you can hear, like I have sniffles right now from the cold. Right now, as I'm recording this, and in this video, you can also hear me with the sniffles, because I always get them when it's cold. Ah. So yeah, I don't know what that tower is. I actually didn't even notice it until watching this. Is that like a radio tower or something? Looks like it. And there's a... Um a wine, wine shop, wine cellar, whatever you want to call it. Another nice... There's lots of wine shops here. Mendoza is like the wine capital of South America, practically. My bougie friends from the US, well, they're not bougies, but they they have... Like, they've been to the wine regions of California. They told me that Mendoza was, like, better than Napa, whatever that means. So, yeah, I'm proud. We have wine here. We have, you know, wine is... Wine is probably the bougiest thing in the world when you think about it, like, like... Like, the process to create wine, like, you know, like, bougie-style wine, is ludicrous. Like, the amount of effort that goes into it could go into practically anything else, and you would produce, like, a million... a million times what they produce, and stuff that is way more useful as well. So it's just, like, absolutely pointless. It shouldn't exist, and when the revolution comes, I'm going to make sure it doesn't. The, the only wine, the people's wine, is wine that, that is created by people who, like, jump on grapes with their feet, like I saw in the movies a few times, okay? No other type is allowed. So coming up here, like, I was thinking, oh my god, are these, like, people, like, trying to be, like, yellow vests Argentina? Like, trying to, like, protest the quarantine or something, like, right-wingers? And I was gonna, if it was that, I was gonna, like, make fun of them on camera. And then I noticed, no, it's not that. It's, like, a protest of um, municipal workers who um, aren't getting paid enough during the quarantine or something like that. 
And unfortunately, my battery... My battery, um, ran out, like, r really soon. But not before I, I got to see the people and their banners. Suarez, stop lying. Um, stop lying about our, um, our terrible salaries. Raise, um, wage increase now. And hey, I literally just saw this video where apparently later that day, the cops came and, and basically kidnapped everyone who was protesting. So that's, that's cool. All cops are bastards, including Argentine ones. So yeah, there you go. That's your hour-long tour of Mendoza. All done just for you guys, my loyal fans. No idea why you would watch this video to the end, but if you're here, know that you are a powerful sorcerer.